Hey guys, my name is Jason from Sutherland and today's video is a collaboration video with Homesteaders of America Conference and we're going to do another garden tour this year. I'll put a playlist of all the garden tours that we did this year so you can kind of see the progression of our garden throughout this year. And we are in the mountains of North Carolina so that makes us Zone 7A if you're curious. <laughs> Let's get started. We are starting this garden tour right here in front of our greenhouse. And let's go inside. I'll show you what we got growing in here. Now, originally my goal for this year, my dream for this year was to have this be the pepper hothouse. And it didn't quite turn out that way. We had one, I was like, no tomatoes. We had one volunteer tomato plant that we were like, okay, fine. <laughs> and it's taken up a lot of room. And we've planted peppers. Some of them got eaten by bugs and another bunch of them got scattered around and destroyed by a chicken who came in here. Regardless, we're still growing peppers in here. And these are bell peppers and this is the green goddess pepper, which are both very good peppers. This is our seed starting table. I'm about to clear whatever didn't grow out and start cleaning these trays and getting ready for our fall garden. You'll see in this garden tour that that's pretty much what we're doing right now is preparing for our fall garden and kind of just cleaning the old stuff out. One of the really cool things that I'm excited about is these coolest plants. And we started from seed and this, I don't know if you know, but the seeds are really, really, really tiny and it's really hard to plant just one seed. So what I ended up doing was just planting a bunch of them in a pot and then going through and separating each of them into their own pot and that worked really well. In our last garden tour, we had our garlic in this row. And since then we have harvested all 95 garlic heads and we have them over in our shed drying, which I'll show you in a minute. And they're just drying out so that way we can store them inside the house. In this bed where we had the garlic, we've planted our pumpkins, our pie pumpkins. These are sugar pie pumpkins and they're doing pretty well. Now under these two row covers, if you remember, we had all of our lettuce and our salad greens, spinach and um, bok choy, cabbages, those have all been eaten or put in our refrigerator and um, we're cleared out these beds and we've put new compost soil right on top and we're prepping them and getting them ready for our fall plants. Now for this chard, what I did was just give them a haircut. So we've cut them all back. Most of them looked like this. And so we've cut them all back and we're gonna let them regrow and you can already see some of the regrowth starting to happen here. And they'll regrow and we will have fresh new chard. We did leave the collards in this row because they look great. On these cattle panel trellises, we used to have our peas growing and those are all done for the season and we've harvested them and enjoyed many, many peas. So we've ripped out those plants and now I am trying to plant cucumbers. I did plant quite a few and either they've gotten eaten like this little guy um, or maybe the seeds just didn't germinate. So I'm going to try that again and do another round of cucumbers here. So I want to grow cucumbers on this trellis. I also did another round of cucumbers back on those back trellises there too. This is our onion and leek row, and we've already harvested so many delicious onions. They look fantastic. And we are, har we are harvesting and drying these onions right over in our garden shed along with our garlic. We have also have leeks in this row, but those are not ready to be harvested, so we're still going to leave those in. We have them sewn in among the yarrow. But in places where we've had a little bit of space, I've planted some okra and some peppers. And one of the things that I've learned this year in our garden was I didn't really like that because I've kind of sprinkled in the okra. I thought I would like it because I was just making good use of little tiny space pockets. But now I can't remember sometimes where I planted the okra and when I want to go harvest the okra. I think next year what my 
plan is is that I'm going to plant all of the same things in the same row all next together. I think I like that better. In this row is our root row. We've planted beets and carrots and we actually really just need to get these out of the ground. They're ready and we've enjoyed so many beets already and so many carrots. The radishes were long gone a long time ago, early spring, um, but we want to finish up this row and then just get it cleared and maybe plant another succession of um, another root crop or something else. One of the surprises that we found in our garden this year is I had forgotten that I had planted a Tulsi holy basil plant. It must have been somewhere here last year and it's dropped its seeds and we have a bunch of Tul Tulsi holy basil plants that just sprung up and they smell amazing. They're wonderful and they're great for making tea. This is almost like the junk drawer in the house that you're embarrassed to open in front of guests. And then you open it, you're like, ah, don't look at this. Okay. This is one of our covered rows that is pretty much done for the season. We're gonna go in here, just like those other two covered rows, and really just clean it out and prepare this bed for something else for fall. But these cabbages, they look pretty good actually this one we have i don't know if you if you're new to our channel we've talked about before in our garden tours how we just can't grow uh like brassicas for some reason i don't know if it's just something that's missing in our soil but like our um our cabbages and our cauliflowers and our broccolis always grow really tall instead of short and actually form a head they just grow really tall and leafy but we try it every year anyway we do have some dill growing in here and I'm going to go through some point today and harvest all of this dill and we can dry it right in our kitchen on our drying rack as I do with most of our herbs and some of our flowers, some of our medicine that we grow here. All right, so this is our potato row that we planted. We had about this whole row and then another half row of potatoes different kind of potato, red potatoes. I think there were some uh, gold, Yukon gold potatoes, but it didn't do so well uh, on potatoes. Um, but so that's why it kind of looks like a mess right here. And so we need to get this going and, and, and reestablish this bed after you pick the potatoes. I think next year what we want to try different is maybe do container potatoes and not put them in the rows. Um, I think that might help things a little bit and maybe we could produce more potatoes. On this trellis here, I've planted two different types. I don't know if that's a good thing, but it was a trial uh, of beans. These are more of the um, shelling type beans. I want to say these are the homestead bean. I don't remember the name of them. I'll have to find the tag down below that's buried. Um, but this is our purple yard long beans and we grew these last year and we absolutely enjoyed them. They were very productive and they just gave us so many beans. So we've got this plant kind of intertwining and they're so different enough that it's okay that we mix them because we'll know which one's which. And then right down below here, we've planted our tomatillos and oh, I, some more dill <laughs> and some thyme on the bottom. Something ate our good tomatoes that were growing right here. Probably. Look at that big old chunk. That's a big bite. Probably a groundhog? Yeah. We didn't see any groundhogs this year uh, up until about, probably about a couple weeks after our two pigs were gone. Like no groundhogs at all. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the pigs were gone and then we started seeing them. Here we've got our tomato rows. I've got two rows of tomatoes. They're all strung up on this fence. So far we've gotten a few tomatoes, but I feel like this season <laughs> is just really slow for tomatoes this year. And I've talked to other people who live nearby and we're all just waiting for our green tomatoes to turn. Oh, look at these are, these are pretty much ready. I don't know why this, this variety, um, these purple yard long beans always attract ants. I remember that last year there was a lot of ants on them. But we have more purple yard long beans growing on this trellis here. We've also got cucumbers on this side. So I decided to do one vine of 
purple yard long beans in the front on both sides and then cucumbers on the other one just to see if that would work. Um, so we do have cucumbers and we've, we've got some really pretty, these ones are, uh, I believe it's called an apple cucumber. This one is not ready yet. And here's another one here. Oh, look at these. So excited for these. And down here we've got some tomatoes which are falling over and they've got some blight issues because of all the rain that we've had. And some basil that's growing. We've got some pretty good beans. They are getting attacked by bugs so we do need to be better about getting out here and just squashing all the bugs. I'm not sure if it's just too late for this plant but we do have quite a bit of bean beetles. And that's just organic gardening. I mean we can we can try and like squish them all off. But we haven't been out here too much, but these are our beans. Right now in the season, you know, grass is overgrown. We got weeds, you know, things are producing. So everything's growing, but you know, it's just hard to keep up with it right about now. Yeah, it starts looking like a jungle and then we're like, ah, it's overwhelming. But, I mean, it's, it's all the process. We've got some tomatoes that are semi-ready right here. I want to get them before the groundhog does. <laughs> and then we also put cardboard. We put cardboard in between these rows and with the wood chips. And some of these have fabric barriers also. Yeah. And that grass is no joke. <laughs> Here's a couple good ones. This last row here is our zucchini bed. We've already harvested so many zucchinis and yellow squash. I think that these, some of these plants have gotten um, the vine borer. That's why their leaves are yellow, but part of them is still producing and it's doing well. This one's still going strong and giving us some fruit. We've got some great looking zucchini on this side. And in between, I don't know if you remember, but I've planted some beets and the tops have gotten eaten off by rabbits, but they are still growing really well. And I really liked this idea of growing in between the zucchini so the zucchini can give these plants some shade. Here is our garden shed where we keep most of our chicken feed and some of our tools when we're not using them. This is where we decided to store our garlic and let it cure because there's a great airflow, but it's also protectant from the weather. So they are actually just about done. These were probably harvested maybe three weeks ago. And so what we'll do is just come through and clip off these, clip off the stems and store them right inside our house. Here is also where we're storing our onions and they look great. They're drying up nicely. So you'll just come through and just check to see how dry they are. This one still feels like it's a little bit wet. Some of these we'd had out here for a while. And then another way you can tell too is just by getting some scissors and clipping this. And if there's any green left or, it should feel papery like how this feels all the way through. And then you know it's ready to be brought inside and to be stored. Another one of the lessons that we learned this year in our garden was that we didn't really like having so many flowers inside the garden. We enjoy having flowers outside the garden and maybe just one or two inside the garden, but there were so many volunteer flowers that popped up from last year's garden and they were really just in the way. They kind of prevented us from getting and maneuvering in and out of the rows. So I think that next year we will try and transplant the volunteers outside of the garden. Our garden isn't that very big. It's and we do understand that it's important to have flowers in and near your garden for the bees, but there was just a lot of them that just popped up and they were really just, they took up space where we could have grown food. All right, so coming from our garden, this is our pig pumpkin patch miracle. So we had more pumpkin plants than this, but a lot of them didn't produce, they didn't grow. We do have some growing here though, like this one looks really good, and a few here, but we had a lot more here, a lot of them died. We were just brought in compost after the pigs were here, and hopefully this will be a lot of uh, just uh, pumpkin pie, pumpkins that we could have. 
uh, for this fall winter and we can put away. And that concludes our garden tour. We want to thank you guys for coming along. My name is Lorraine from Sow the Land, and this has been a collaboration with the Homesteaders of America. There are other homesteaders and gardeners who are doing, who are taking part in this collaboration. If you go and head on over to the Homesteaders of America YouTube page, there will be a list and you can find all the other participants in this collaboration. And we hope you have a great day. All right, so this is all, this is all of our lettuces that kind of went to seed and got full of ca cabbage moss and worms. So we're gonna give these to the chickens.